everyone on the lovely, uh, lovely, well, evening. The end of the week, we survived. That's good, isn't it? Well, at least uh, uh, for me, it was a very difficult week. So I'm really looking forward to that exercise, being honest, because I had a very hectic day to the extent that I didn't think that I would make it on time to, to host that meeting because traffic was horrendous. Um, we have some people um, in the waiting room. Um, so we are meeting today because we would like to acknowledge the aspect of um, children's art weeks and children's mental health week, um, which for us are extremely interlinked because we both with Jennifer um, are artists who are driven by our mental health uh, um, issues and, and struggles and thanks to art we managed to jump over certain hurdles in our life um, and we found art as medicine um, and we use it on a daily basis really to elevate certain um, certain stress you know fears issues that you know bother us and um, very often we underestimate how simple it can be to give us the relief. So at some point when we met with Jennifer, uh, we decided to host monthly monthly workshops to, um, to show that you don't need to be an artist, you don't need to have any artistic skills whatsoever, you just need to have a willingness to get a bit messy um, and creative and you can produce beautiful outcome without without many skills really with the techniques that that we are introducing. Um, so my name is Dorota Choma. I am an artist, although I didn't call myself artist for my entire life. I turned into art in 2019 um, after a massive uh, mental health breakdown. And um, yeah, here I am a um, couple of years um, on the journey, which I'm, which I'm enjoying very much. Um, and um, Jennifer has a very similar story. So I will now pass for the short introduction to Jennifer. So welcome everybody. Um, and I just wanna make sure, no, nobody in the waiting room. Um, I, as I said before, but not everybody was here. I'm American born, but I've been living in Sweden for about 20 years. Um, throughout my, my life, I have been dealing with uh, mental health issues um, and it's been a, a struggle off and on throughout my life. It's something that I, um, focus on in my artwork and try to reach as many people as possible to let them know um, that they're seen and they're heard and they're not alone. Um, and as Dorota said, we started this, I guess it was, we've done three episodes. So this must be the fourth month that we've been doing this. It's actually the fifth, if I'm not mistaken, because we did the specials as well. That's Art Heal. So I think that ah. might be the fifth month. You're now. right. You're right. So we've been doing this for five months now. Um, you know, just as Dorota said, trying to show people how doing very, very simple um, creative exercises can help a little bit. And it's not going to be a cure. It's not going to heal anything. Um, but it does help while you're doing it. Um, absolutely. And uh, it's something that I need on a very regular basis. It's just as important to me as taking my medication and any sort of talk therapy that, uh, that I might have access to or might be taking part in. And so we just, you know, my, my problem started when I was a child. Um, and I think that it was kind of taboo. Nobody really talked about it. Um, you know, children did not receive that much help back in the 70s, eight, early 80s. Uh, and I think that if I had gotten more help then, perhaps I would be in a slightly better place now because I would have learned how to deal with some of my emotions and also learned that I wasn't alone and that there was no shame in the way that I was feeling. Um, and that's one of the reasons why I'm so incredibly passionate about this subject and, you know, just want to reach as many people as possible. So uh, we want to keep we want to keep it short since we know that there's some kids out there. So I will stop there. And, yeah. you know, if we you have any. We just mentioned that um, when we heard about breaking the chalk uh, initiative to bring some uh, 
mental health into education and school curriculums, we we you know instantly felt connection. And um, uh, today a workshop is happening in collaboration with Breaking the Chalk and um, Steve, um, who is. Um, having a lovely podcast um, about mental health that is really, really worth listening because he probably visited every almost part of the globe. Um, and you can hear how mental health uh, looks uh, in other countries and, and you can find out very, very interesting aspects uh, about, about legislation and, and all possible things. And I think we have um, a representative of Breaking the Talk and we have Steve as well. So if we perhaps let them just say a few words about themselves and why, why they are here with us today, um, that would be lovely. Yeah, can I, can I put the both of you on? Is that okay? I'm going to- I'm unmuted. <laughs> I think you're unmuted um, now. Let me put you up as a spotlight and let me see if I can find Steve. Oh, I don't know if Steve's unmuted. Are you there? <laughs> Yep, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, let me, let me put you, ah, I don't think I can add you as a spotlight since you don't have video on, but that's okay. Go ahead and, and the two of you can um, introduce yourselves. Hi, so I'm Lyra Weltzman. Um, I founded Breaking the Chalk, which is an education and mental health company. Um, so meshing together education, mental health, and breaking the way we provide education to make it more progressive in 21st century skills of life. Um, and kind of bettering and supporting our kids and our youth um, better for their mental health um, to, you know, create that awareness, bringing mental health um, awareness into schools and I love this project because I give kind of like mental health art clubs to kids and I've seen like how amazing it is for them. I love art myself as someone who also struggles with their mental health. Um, and definitely if I would have known about emotions and mental health and everything like Jennifer said, um, it would have really helped. So definitely very excited and thanks for having me. <laughs> Um, so, hi everyone, I'm Steve Lawler, I'm a mental health lawyer of 10 years experience and as Dorota kindly pointed out, I did set up the Legal Wolf podcast, uh, which, yes, Dorota is, is correct, I think I've got near enough every country around the globe, their perspective on mental health and what we can do to tackle the stigma to normalise the conversation. This is a great project to be involved with. Um, art and is so helpful in regards to your mental health and it's particularly beneficial not only for children but for adults and you don't have to be good at art to take part in it um i'm terrible at art useless art but you don't have to be any good to do it which is great and it's art is very powerful um, as both dorota uh, and jennifer have uh, eloquently put in their podcast episodes. Great. Thank you so much. Thanks, guys. Um, <laughs> let me put you both back on mute and feel free to hop in anywhere you want. Um, yes, Lily is a um, counselor. Um, so um, after the presentation and the exercise, uh, uh, Lily will come back on, on, on the spotlight and if there will be any questions. Um, about um, how to help youth. Um, I'm sure Lira will be able to provide some guidance. Great. Okay. <coughs> so, so will we receive a copy of the presentation after? Yes, the way that we do it is um, we record the presentation right. during, and then we upload it to our YouTube channel. And, oh, okay. Um, a couple days after these workshops, we'll probably wait till after all three are done since we have one Friday, Saturday and Sunday. Okay. Um, we will send out an email to all of the participants um, oh, perfect. that will have all the information. So you can perfect. watch it again and yeah. Wonderful, thank you. Sure. <laughs> and I will um, 
while Dorota is doing her presentation, I've got some information that I'm going to go ahead and paste into the chat. Um, so make sure that you have a look uh, at some point before uh, before we end for today. Um, I'm just enabling um, transcript as we have a request. Oh, great. <clears throat> I just choked. I heard. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. Um, I, I'm not that I am so emotional today, but it just <laughs> released some uh, tears. Um, okay, so um, you just need normal piece of paper. It can be the photocopy paper, piece of envelope, like Jennifer is a bit naughty. She has a piece of envelope, I will tell you. Uh, any paper whatsoever, and you need um, a pen. I love those chunky pens because um, they are very easy to lead. And in particular <clears throat> for children, those felt pens are quite good, although they may stain. Um, so yeah, this is the, 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 the risk there, but they, they are very easy because you don't need to have a lot of pressure on it to make it right. And it's pretty important for young children whose fine motor skills are still developing and um, they, they need to have the ease of making the mark. Um, so you will see it on my other screen. And that particular exercise um, um, is uh, called mirroring exercise. Um, it has been introduced to me by a wonderful counselor, art therapist actually, um, whose uh, details we will post in the chat. Um, and I got so fascinated with that technique that I really do it on a weekly basis. Even last night, I had very uh, difficult evening and I had to detach myself. Um, so I created it with red because there was a lot of anger. Uh, so not only you can um, ease certain emotions with it, but also you can use color to express those emotions. So because I was very edgy last night, um, that is why it's red. You can use any color because you like it or because it looks good on the paper, whatever you, you, you want. So this is what you start. You start from the top uh, middle page and you are asked to draw a line representing how you feel. So for example, today was a difficult day and I felt very edgy. So I will have a lot of curly stuff. There was even point that I lost my plot and I was fluctuating all over today. So this is my line representing how, how I feel. It was a long week with very little uh, sleep. So I am constantly uh, well, jumping from one emotion to another. Um, so depending how you feel, you could have a pretty straight line if you feel calm, but if you feel a bit jagged or uh, distressed, you know, this line in the middle should represent how you feel. And when you're done with that, you mirror the line, starting from one side, whatever the, the space you want, you just to mirror the line. Make sure that you breathe, be slow. Go again. Remember to breathe. And again. Go as fast or as slowly as your hand and abilities allow you. Again, until you fill in all right side of your paper. Mm. 
this is what you can do if music help you. You could have a nice calming music playing. I am a bit um, fascinated with the sound of the marker on the paper. For some reason, I love it. It it calms me down. But I know that some people get irritated by it. So make sure that you provide some audio type of uh, <clears throat> stimulus that helps you calm. And just keep going until you fill in all page. And this is what you will find that as you go and cover all page, the line is less jagged, is less sharp, and it's like ripples on the water that at the beginning those circles are quite you know close together but the ripple smoothens after a while. And this is exactly what happens with those emotions. It's okay to feel as you feel, but you need to remember the ripple will follow with time, with briefing that provides your brain with the signal, I am safe, I am calm, that emotions will smoothen. So this is what you do, you do exactly the same on the other side. For some reason, it's not very comfy for me to go that way. I don't know why, it might be because I'm very right-handed. So this is what I will do. I will switch my uh, paper upside down because it's more comfortable. And we go again. Brief. Try to take deep breaths because those deep breaths send signals to your brain to calm. I think it's nice because it, it becomes quite meditative as well, especially with the deep breathing and um, yeah. movement. Yeah, when you do it on your own, um, and really focus on just nothing else but follow that line. Brief, like you are trying to give life to it to continue. And just focus on those lines. Try not to, you know, engage with anything else. And I find myself that I reach the state of the flow that everything tunes out. And I am so into it mm. that. I find myself that when I cover the page, <clears throat> I just go over some lines to just make them, you know, nicer, smoother, thicker, whatever really applies to me. This is what you can do. You can even include words. Like if there is something that um, you want focus particularly, you could put words there like calm or joy. You could put some symbols somewhere and just go around them. Um, and you can go around some of the lines, like if you are not happy with them, like I am perfectionist and sometimes I have this urge to make sure that the lines are smooth and thick. I go just over it and I find myself that I can spend hours and hours and hours doing it. Um, awesome. Yeah, and this what is uh, said about this kind of patterns, you can even do some joining up, you can you can put pattern in it, if you want, you know, you, you, you know, the really possibilities are endless, whatever you fancy, whatever you feel, whatever, you know, much more you need out of this outcome, you just do it. And this what you are ending up with is a pattern that it's very often um, uh, visible in nature, isn't it? Absolutely. And it's known that those kind of patterns uh, help you to relax and help you to feel calm uh, because the repetition. The repetition is extremely important, not only for learning, um, although we know it, right? Children do learn through repetition. That is why they will sing the, you know, nursery rhymes over and over again to master it. Right. But also for emotional 
you know, stimulation and calmness, the repetitive um, activities help you achieve this kind of flow state, which is the state which you need to, to get your emotions under control, to get um, calmer and relaxed. And you can do with it whatever you want. And you can take another piece of paper and you can draw another line and just go with it. So for example, I will now go a bit crazy. And then I will go around it again. The point is that you can receive so lovely outcomes um, that they really look pleasing to the eye. Well, I could do it for hours and hours, being honest. I, um, I have to admit that this, this is the first time I've had a chance to do it. And wow, <laughs> I really like it. I can see it being quite addictive, especially when you're sitting in really um, boring meetings. Yeah, this is the point that this is something that you can do on the go. You can do it even in a train because you don't you don't need felt pen. You could have a normal pen. You yeah. could have a, a strip of paper. It doesn't matter. That's uh, right. I admit I do a lot of uh, doodling during the meetings because I have problem focusing on audio information. And nowadays when, when you have so many faces and the screen jumps from the person who speaks, I have difficulty focusing. So very often I do it on the side because only then I can listen. And it's, it has been researched and that there is some, some kind of evidence uh, researched. Um, it was Harvard University, I think, that researched that aspect that didn't actually help you listen. Yeah. But I had to pull it out for my managers because I was accused of being rude and um, not attentive mm. uh, for doodling during meetings. So have some research um, at your um, you know, disposal if you get accused that you are not behaving appropriately at work. Or you can call Steve to help you out uh, on the <laughs> legal aspect of it. <laughs> and it's, this, it's the same, I know. Um, I, I've been diagnosed with ADD. My daughter has as well. And the way that it works, at least in Sweden, is that when you receive a diagnosis, especially you know, as a child, uh, the psychiatrist will write a plan for school yeah. for uh, what will help the child. And they always include doodling in the plan. Wow. Um, and I've had problems because even though uh, it's written in the plan, the teachers don't necessarily recognize it as okay. And so that's when, you know, mama bear comes out and, you know, yeah. let her doodle. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I don't understand why doodling is perceived as, you know, misbehavior. I can't really understand. This is something that we really need to get across to, you know, to practitioners working with children. Mm. Uh, that, okay, if you find that they don't listen and then don't learn, fair enough, then it's distracting them. But, right. you know, anytime I'm called to answer questions, I can answer the question means I am listening, I am learning, you know, so what's right. the point? Let me do what, what helps me, you know, function. Um, so yeah, um, well, I could go on and on and on. And why we are presenting it as, um, as exercise for children, because it's so easy, because they can do it even, you know, during lesson. Um, not that I encourage it to them to be put uh, in detention, but you know, if, if you have a word with, with uh, the teacher that they need to do, though, perhaps like, um, you know, um, Jennifer said her daughter has that in the plan, um, then, you know, it's, it's an easy way to, to get them into calmer zone, mostly when, when there is some kind of stress, like uh, mostly before exams or anything of this kind. Maya, I see that you've written, you're showing on the screen, um, can't see you at the moment. So what we will do is afterwards, we will let people um, display <laughs> their masterpieces if they'd like to. Yeah. Um, and this kind of exercise is suitable for everyone, uh, for very young, because by 
Mirroring that line, children learn fine motor skills, which is pre-writing exercise, which is the control over equipment exercise. Um, so it has so many benefits, even people, elderly people uh, who may be losing certain cognitive skills. Mm. This is amazing for them because it's easy to do. Um, doesn't require them to create a picture as like landscape or, or you know, um, whatever, um, but helps them to practice uh, certain skills that may be slightly getting worse, but by practicing them, they are, they are making sure that they can go on with their cognitive abilities a bit longer. Um, so art is present in so many aspects and helpful. And I am so sometimes sad that schools are cutting the artistic yes. curriculum to the minimum which is which is something that shouldn't happen exactly exactly so yeah this is it i could i could create another one but we could go like that for whole night i think <laughs> i think i think we probably could i think it's uh, an easy thing to do should we switch over and see if anybody yes please wants to share those there's i think um Let's see. I'll just show mine really quickly. Um, I went a little bit different uh, as I tend, tend to do. And because today I felt such a range, a huge range of emotions coming out of a um, pretty deep, uh, oops, Maya is in the waiting room again, let me let her in. Um, coming out of a very, very uh, deep, dark depression, today was actually a really good day. Um, so I have used a whole bunch of, oops. Of, colors, yeah. Yeah, of different colors. Um, and I added some words in there uh, as well, such as, you know, today was a better day. I painted, I meditated, I felt grounded. I connected today. I saw some light, um, and then just some some reminders. Um, let's see, we've got in the waiting room again, uh, such as it's okay for me to feel bad. A painting brings me joy. I am present. Uh, just little little reminders to myself. And so yeah, that's uh, that's what I came up with. And just as Dorota said, you know, it started as quite a quite a jagged line and then by the end it's like a wave like a, a, a ripple in the water or just a yeah just small waves that I can that I can handle <laughs> exactly and this is this is the point of any emotion that we need to remember that no matter how bad it is at this moment it shall pass that's right it shall pass. You just you just try your coping mechanism. Try to calm down, and the ripple will get smoother and smoother, and it will hopefully disappear. But if not, like you said, that wave will be such a little wave that you can then swim in it. Yeah. Um, and maintain your functioning. Wow. Oh, it I love it. Van Gogh, doesn't it? Started to do downward spiral, and then I kind of just went. And these actually were quite nice to just go over. It was like, you yeah. know, like a bit of breathing out. Mm -hmm. So this was nice. It was actually very fun. And it was nice to do the thicker ones and then the lighter, the thinner ones. It's, it's almost like a mandala. Yes. To kind of go, it's very calming. It's really good for anxiety as well. So it's yeah. like very, and for learning with ADHD, I was going like this when you were talking. <laughs> <laughs> because it's really, you kind of, even when you're on a phone call, you kind of like, you know. Because you don't need to think about yourself. it. Not. Yeah, to get your yeah. thing, thoughts going. So it's really great for different things, but it was a lot of, very nice. Okay, okay so do we have any questions uh, to um, Leah, um, who is working with youth um, and, um, you know, offering certain sessions and counseling. Um, if you have a question, you can put it in a chat or you can just voice it out, whichever works for you. Um, 
one message is it message okay that's uh, so me sending messages here. yeah so um jennifer is posting things uh, in um in the chat so how you can find us how we can find lear how we can find steve on social media um so perhaps i will have a question Lear, to you tell us about breaking the chalk what are next steps what what has been achieved so far and you know excite us a little bit Okay, cool. <laughs> so um, breaking the chalk is, as I said, education and mental health. It's all about changing the way we work with our kids and with our teens. Um, it's a lot of mental health advocacy and awareness. So it comes about with online therapy. Um, a lot of, we do some art with it as well um we doing with steve we doing um we have an initiative for having workshops and um, for parents and teens and teachers um on how to create mental health awareness on opening up the conversation about it very practical informative workshops um and i do that also with breaking the talks consulting so it's mediating between the teachers, um, the families and the child. It's usually all three, but it's, it's either just with the family or just the child or just with the school um, to meet all your child's needs or your learner's needs on a social, behavioral, mental, emotional learning level. Um, so it's very much how to support your child. I mean, the, the reason why Breaking the Chalk, I even founded Breaking the Chalk um, was because I didn't have that as a learner, um, very much confused about mental health and I never really connected with education. So that's why I became very passionate about progressive um, 21st century learning, very like freedom. Um, and I was studying ADHD and I saw how it difficult, so many like study cases showed how difficult it was for the kids to be understood and to um, get support and like the negative consequences that came with it. And I was like, oh, I'm going to do it. <laughs> so I kind of during the pandemic um, opened a founder breaking the talk. So it's very much teaching education. So there is teaching involved, therapy counseling and mental health awareness workshops. So um, anybody can contact you? Or how yes, does it work? Sure. So yes. I can put the website link um, in the comments. It's just yes. www.breakingthechalk.com. Um, and then we also on Instagram and Facebook and LinkedIn. So I'll put it in the chat. Okay. So um, you mentioned three, um, uh, three um, subjects, right? Uh, the child, yeah. the school and the parent. Yes. Does any of those can contact you? Yes, any exactly. So parents for families can contact the school, the teacher, and if a teen wants or a child wants to contact me with pleasure. Yeah. Okay. It's all those three areas. And does it matter where the people are? No, it's online. It's fully <laughs> virtual. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, brilliant. Because uh, why are asking? Because before before you joined, we were asking where are people uh, tuning yes, in. And I and, said uh, that. Yeah, we are all over the place. <laughs> all over, exactly. That's why it's best virtual. Help <laughs> more people. Yeah. So, what's the next very big step that Breaking Chalk is undertaking? So, um, these really great workshops are coming up. Um, we're having it from all over. Uh, we're doing um, India, we're doing America, we're doing UK, Spain. So we're really doing different workshops for mental health. Um, we, I have the next steps is to get more counseling going, um, working one-on-one -on -one with kids. Um, I'm working on a secret project, <laughs> but it's very much for um, a product for um I don't know if I should do a trigger warning, but I'm putting a trigger warning um, for kids who struggle with self-harm. And um, so it's a product specifically um, to aid them in that struggle. So it's been going on for a while, but it's, yeah. Just yeah, it's, 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 but, uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but it's just, th th those are the next steps. 
Um, so yeah, just growing it and trying to connect with as many people. That's brilliant. Yeah. How, how can we find out about those workshops that you are planning in different places? Would people be able to see on the website? Yes. You can are they free? Sorry? Are they free? <laughs> uh, <laughs> <that's> maybe. <laughs> we okay. can see how it goes. But for now, the workshops that we're doing, um, we're starting in August. Um, they're not free, but maybe we can have one or two. <laughs> Okay, yeah, brilliant. Yeah, so perhaps you could have a test or something that it could uh, yeah, know what pilot. it's all about. Yeah. yeah. Uh, oh, yeah, this is my other professional hat coming on story. I need to push it away. <laughs> <laughs> um,